History of Agriculture Industry in the United States, Unit 1. During today's discussion, we're going to talk about some topics in agriculture, including sustainability, the technology that's impacted agriculture, farm policy, and the consumer dependence on a cheap food supply in the United States. I'm breaking down the periods of agriculture into three time periods, the first one being subsistence farming, which was the period of time when we were homesteading from the 1700s to early 1900s, the mechanization of agriculture from the 1920s to the 1960s, and the specialization and the influx of corporate agriculture from the 1960s to the present. Subsistence farming is homesteading. It's what happened when this country was being settled. We had a lot of immigrants coming over from Europe that wanted to be involved in agriculture. They were willing to move their family out to uh, the homestead and work very hard to make a living on the farm. It was very much manual labor and they depended on a lot of children to provide the labor force for the farm. And it was hard work but it was a good life and um, they were able to um, sustain their family. The farms were very diversified with both crops and livestock and the diversification was part of just feeding your family um, that spread the risk but at the same time allowed you to provide uh, food for the family and it's a good example of the permaculture system that exists today on a small farm. Along with the Industrial Revolution agriculture had was impacted by that as well. The reliance on machinery became more important as the farms grew larger and a lot of the labor force for the farm was moving to the city to take a factory job because it was a more uh, dependable income and the development of the transportation and re re refrigeration system changed the markets and it really put agriculture on a de on dependence of foreign oil for farm production. And now we're in the time period of specialization where the farms are not very diverse. Many farms in Illinois are growing corn and soybeans only. The livestock is gone and they're very specialized in what they do. With the technology of seed and pesticide development and the improved machinery, the farms are large and very dependent on the government uh, farm programs to survive. The corporate agriculture side has affected uh, the livestock industry more than the crop industry as the packing companies have started to control all steps in the process. They own the livestock, they're doing the processing and they're selling it directly um, to the consumer. The chicken industry was the first to go followed by the swine industry and now even the cattle industry is becoming a corporate owned entity. The farmers don't own the livestock, the corporations own the livestock, and um, the animal production is consolidated on a few l large farms. And that creates the manure problem that we have. It's a very, in a very important uh, environmental problem that needs to be addressed as we've concentrated the, this manure on a few small farms. Also on the crop side, um, the corporate uh, consolidation has probably been more in the area of seed and reducing the genetic diversity uh, with companies like Monsanto as they're becoming um, the market share in seed is, is growing and biotechnology uh, is an acceptable form of seed development. The farm policy um, would really became important in the 60s and 70s probably one of the most famous uh, quotes by a Secretary of Agriculture director was Earl Butts and his comment was get big or get out and he was telling the farmers that they needed to increase the farm size. The government was going to support uh, low price grain commodities so the more you could produce you were guaranteed a profit. This produced cheap uh, feed for livestock which lowered the price of meat and really made cheap food for consumers. But subsidized farm products tends to be used to produce food that's not that healthy and that tends that's my opinion on what's 
wrong with our farm policy today. It encourages production of corn and soybeans and both of those products tend to produce pretty produce food that is processed and not that healthy. So the, with the farm policy, capital replaced labor as the farm size uh, continued to grow. Borrowing money became the easiest way to raise capital. And I really feel like today's consumers are dependent on government subsidies and crop insurance to make sure that they have a profit. So the risk of farming is not near as severe as it used to be. Now, the government has kind of eliminated a lot of the risk. The cheap food, um, low commodity prices, uh, and encourage development of low-cost food additives. Um, corn sweetener is a good example, and most of soda is sweetened by corn, and that's because of cheap corn prices. And in the U.S., we spend approximately 10% of our income on food, which is one of the, the smallest percentage-wise of any country in the world. But like I said before, cheap food does not always equal healthy food, and I think that's part of our, our problem. So uh, as far as the current state of agriculture, um, in the livestock industry, it's really being controlled by the packing plants, and they're wanting genetics that are all the same, so all the animals are the same size, and it makes it easier for, for planting. Crop subsidies have increased the price of farmland to record levels. Our farmers are getting old. The average age of the grain farmer is somewhere around 60 years old, and who's going to take, who's going to take their, their place? Grain farms have been taking uh, crops off the field year after year, and they tend to be a shortage of nutrients, and the livestock farm has so much manure that they have a manure problem, and both of these have affected the environment in a negative, in a negative way.